Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And I'm giving my knee and my back a rest today and so I'm at home and chilling out in the back garden. But I thought I would do a quick video for you about all the free stuff that I've got uh, available online and some of it you can download and customize it and make it your own etc etc so there's quite a lot of it and if there's lots of new subscribers to the channel and they probably aren't aware of some of it and maybe even existing uh, subscribers uh, may have missed some of the videos so i thought i'd just do a quick recap through the whole lot and uh, bring everybody up to date okay so you can find everything that i'm going to talk about on my webpage, which is you can find at seasidelife.com, and there's some quick links links across the top here, which I'll show you a bit later. But basically, we want to start with these three blog posts, which are sticky. So these are always at the top, and we'll start with what I think is the most useful thing that I've written, uh, and so that's my all year round vegetable sowing and planting guide. And this takes you through month by month what to sow and what to plant. It's really based on my information. And so I really recommend that what you do is you just take a copy of it from the browser, control C, control V, paste it into your own documents and make it your own. And feel free to uh, republish it again as yours. Uh, everything that I do is free. You can do with it what you want, as long as you modify it. Uh, it'd be nice if you attributed it, the original, to me as well, but that's not really necessary. Um, anyway, I really like this. I always refer to it. It's one of my favourite uh, documents. It's just so quick to access it, and it's so succinct by comparison with everything else that I do. Next up is the Frequently Asked Questions. And I've always been asked questions to try and answer them uh, briefly in the comments on the blog posts or the videos. But if you want more, take a look at this document. How did I get into gardening? When and why did I retire? What did you do before the allotments? Where are you? Are you really by the seaside? What's your climate like? How many plots do you have? How much growing area do you have? How much time does it take to manage all of this lot? How much do you grow? How do you calculate the value of all those harvests? Are you really self-sufficient? How big is your polytunnel? How did you heat your polytunnel? How much does it cost to run the allotments? What do you do with all that fruit and veg? Where can I download this, your databases? What was that variety name that you mentioned? What should I grow? When should I sow? Where do you get all your seeds from? Where do you get all your containers from? Where do you get your thermostats from? Where do you get your grow lights from? Etc. 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 So uh, next up, monthly sowing and growing guides and videos. So here's the one for May. Let's click on that. And what you get in here is an overview of the month and then a link to the last tour. So every month we do a tour video. This is the April one. Uh, we also did a tour of the kitchen garden and then a video on what am I sowing and growing in May. This one was in two parts, a growing part and a sowing part. Uh, and then a link to my uh, databases and then embedded in the web pages are the actual databases. So this is everything that I sowed in April. Scroll down a bit. This is everything I'm planning to sow in May. Scroll down a bit more. This is everything that I sowed last year. And these are all the varieties that I'm planning to sow this year. Click here and it opens a new web page with a much bigger view of this. You can take your own copies of this database and play around with it yourself etc. All the details are in a blog post I'll show you in a minute. You can also download it as a CSV file and if you do that and then double click in Excel or any other spreadsheet app you'll get all the same data without the pictures and things like that uh, to play around with in a spreadsheet. So then we've got 
how do you plan your fruit and veg garden with my new free tools well they're not new now but when i wrote this they were new uh, so basically what you've got in here is a demo video that shows all the different databases and kind of how they work and then a user guide video that shows you how to get copies of those databases with or without my data how to customize them to suit your own needs and then some examples of the databases so this is the seed management database uh, this is the database for managing bottling drying and freezing and then these are some older videos uh, on the same topic and then every week I write a diary and um, they always have the same picture here so they're easy to recognize so let's quickly have a look at my diary for May so I generally have a little intro about what we did this month, this week rather, how it went. Uh, a review of the finances. So, so far this year we've harvested £2,870 worth of veg uh, and about £1 worth of fruit. Uh, more details on what we've harvested and eaten this week. So this week we harvested £250 worth of veg. Last week it was £303, which was a record. And then some pictures of the harvests, which are sort of scattered through here. What we've bought, so lots of module trays, lots of compost. And then videos of from this week. So this is a nice way, uh, if you don't subscribe to my channel, but you do subscribe to my webpage, then you'll get a list of all the videos for the week in here, and you can decide or not to view them. If you want to subscribe, all you have to do is you just have to put your email address in here and hit the subscribe button. And then every time I post a new uh, web page or post, you'll get an update. So these are the videos from last week planting peppers, smoothies, the what am I sowing and growing videos. videos about bean growing beans early beans and then what have I sown this week so not very much just some white Lisbon and some sweet corn what have we planted you know lots of peppers some spinach what have I potted on crown pink squash tumbled tomatoes first harvest of the week first spring cabbages first strawberries fantastic what have I run out of in store apples new potatoes what's left in the store quite a lot um, water reserves we only keep that up to date when there's no tap water on the allotments uh, kind of highlights and lowlights of the week so I really like writing this every week and I particularly like looking at last year's entries to compare uh, and also to remind me of things that I should do or shouldn't do so then we come on to the databases. Only two are available in public. So that's my allotment management database and my master planning database. Let's look at that one. So there's now a change log so that uh, when I release a new version of this, you can see all the changes from the last version that you had. And I'll skip through this really, really quickly because there's lots of videos on this, but basically, there's a types database, so there's lots of, you know, there's one entry here for lettuce, one entry here for carrots, but loads of varieties of carrots and lettuce. These are the varieties. So I've got this filtered, it's only showing lettuce at the moment. So these are all the different varieties of lettuce that we grow. It's an amazing resource, this, having all of your varieties all logged like this. Let's take that filter off. It's my favourite thing to do on a rainy, cold, horrible winter's day is to play around with this database for a couple of hours in the morning before I force myself to go out to the allotment and it reminds me of what it's all about and why I do it. So yeah, absolutely gorgeous, I love this. And all the other databases basically hang off the types database and the varieties database. So let's look at the seed packets. So these are all the seed packets that we've got. There's a lot of them. What we do 
is we basically, when we get a new seed packet, quickly take a photograph of it, pick uh, which variety it is from the varieties database, um, and then put this number on the seed packet. Then all the seeds are stored in numerical order, so it's trivially easy to find any seed with uh, you just search in here, find the number, and uh, they're all in numerical order, so it's, it's easy to find it. And then we've also got the backs of all the seed packets. That is really useful. Somebody suggested that to me. I added it to the same day because I realized just how useful it is to have ready access to the backs of all your seed packets and all this information about how to sow them and when to sow them and all of that sort of thing. But there's some other really, really nice features in here. One of the things that I really like is to be able to um, look at the suppliers. I've got this one filtered. These are all the free seeds from Grow Your Own. And these are often not the varieties that I normally grow, but if I need a red onion, I can really easily find one. And you know, if I need some chard, for example, and I've got this you know, free seed packet from Grow Your Own magazine for bright lights and it's just really great to uh, have this if i'm looking for a carrot to grow in winter again it's really easy to find this one even though i might not have bought it and so i can't often remember it but because i've got all these freebies that's really great what i also like being able to do is just filtering on type for example these are all the lettuces that i've got and again i can just kind of scroll around here for inspiration I can see the dates, suggested sowing dates and harvest dates, the expiry date on the seed packet, how many seeds I've got. And you know, I can do the same if I want some carrots, for example. And again, these are all the seeds and I've got details of the seed packets and all that sort of thing. And all of this basically, all this information basically comes for free because it's in the varieties database. All I'm adding is a quick photograph and uh, a quick pick from the varieties database. So I love that. I really like keeping a track of what we've harvested. So in this case, we're looking at the first harvest dates and we're looking at the last month's harvests. So first potatoes, 26th of April. First lettuces, outdoor sown, outdoor grown rather, 26th of April. First cucumber, 26th of April. <laughs> First carrots, uh, 26th of April. Um, First sprouts from an outdoor sowing, 18th of April. First spring cabbage, 3rd of May. First strawberries, 30th of April. May the 16th last year. Then I keep a log of everything that I'm sowing. I actually plan what I'm sowing for the month in advance. This is again a really quick and easy to do because basically all I'm just doing is picking from the varieties database. Um, and so beetroot sown, New Zealand spinach sown that I've got to do today. Basically these radish, a couple of lettuces, some winter cabbages, some golden purslane, a bit later on in the month some beans. So I really like that. I really like looking back at last year what I sowed. Uh, it's a really good reference. But long before I'm thinking about sowing, I'm thinking about bed planning. And so that I've got a list of all the beds that we've got. There's a lot of them at the moment. I think this is just filtered to the back garden. So if I take that to filter off, we'll see all the beds. So I've actually got 149 different uh, bed locations. And that includes big containers as well. So this is basically just like a spreadsheet. I've got the beds here. I've got a description of the bed here that I've got what I'm planning to have planted in that bed by month. Uh, it's a bit better than a spreadsheet though because I can just click on here, Grenoble Red, for example, and then this takes me to the varieties database. And so the, here's all the information about Grenoble Red. Here's the seed packets I've got for Grenoble Red. Here's info about Grenoble Red. You know, here's you know where I recommend sowing it and all of this sort of thing. So loads and loads of really great information, just one click away. It, very easy to cut and paste and move things around as plans change in here. 
uh, but it's also a great uh, visualization tool so let's quickly look at that so I'm a very visual person so I can see all the different beds and what they've got in them with photos all of the photos just come from the varieties database so again there's no work involved in any of this this is all just drawn from the same uh, simple data um, and then what I really like being able to do is just pop a filter on here for example I just want to look at the polytunnel so then these are all the polytunnel beds I can see what I've got implanted in those all the way through the year uh, what I also really like is I can just do planning so for example if I want to just make sure that I've got enough spinach for every month of the year now I'm just looking at every bed that contains spinach at some point in the year and I can just make sure that I've got for example if you just take a look in May well, I've got how many beds of spinach so I've got one bed of um, New Zealand spinach that's only was planted in April so that's not ready yet uh, I've got another bed of New Zealand spinach but that's been planted in fact planted it yesterday so still no spinach I can eat but here I've got a nice bed of uh, red kitten spinach on the allotment and another nice bed in the back garden so I've got two beds of spinach at the moment and basically I can just look at that you know all the way through the year just shows me how much spinach of all the different types of spinach we've got in which beds all the way through the year and then very quickly we just keep a tally of all the stuff that we grow all the stuff we harvest rather uh, photos of those things and then automatically it rolls up to these weekly totals and so we can see here for example that we had a total harvest of 250 pounds last week 303 pounds the week before savings off our food bill of 88 pounds both times um, and how many meals and all of that sort of thing let's keep a rough track of all the things that we buy Debbie keeps a log of all of her favorite recipes for preserves this one's filtered to only show preserves that have got an ingredient of strawberries and so that's really useful you know whatever thing you might have a glut of you can just look at that and say maybe I've got strawberries and rhubarb what can I make with that and those are all the recipes that contain strawberries and rhubarb for example if we just cancel that there's all the recipes in total this looks particularly lovely with all the uh, ingredients shown there and then every time we make a batch these are all the batches of preserves and then these are all the books that uh, we take our recipes from and if you look at in a particular book you can see all the recipes from that book again this is just all in the database it's all automatic so I think with that I'll draw to a close and uh, I hope there's something of interest for everybody there from the really simple to the really sophisticated yeah lots of fun to be had so I hope you like this quick video and I'll see you soon